Praise the Lord. I wanted to take a minute to give thanks, but then also to give an update on what's going on at Video. You know, the video ministry that we're doing. Well, I'm getting sick. <laughs> you know, guys, they like to whine, so of course, if they aren't feeling good, they're going to tell you, I don't feel good. Well, I don't feel good. I got a sore throat, so you could pray for me. Meantime, I'm sucking on some candy. Oh well. But this Friday, we're going to take some time off, my wife and I, to do what we do once a year, which is kind of my only real vacation time and hers, you know, to spend with me because other times of the year she goes to spend time with her family, her kids, and and relationships and in-laws and outlaws or ex-laws or whatever they are that she gets a chance to you know see her grandkids because it's one of those kind of families that you know when I married her you know the rest of her family her kids were already grown and she had raised a lot of kids besides her own in her own household and unfortunately they weren't saved so gradually you know they're as you pray for them they may get saved one at a time because that's what happened to my wife she got saved. <laughs> but this Friday, we're going to take the time to just shut down the ministry, to stop, as it were, video, and to get away from everything. You know, all technology, all the phones, telephones, cameras, lights, action, television, radios, you name it. And just kind of veg out. Because that's what we like to do. What we do is we go out in the country. You know, we go far, far away where there's no cell phone towers. And it's blocked by all kinds of mountainous areas. Oh, no, they're going to die out there. <laughs> well, if we do, we deserve it. We're from Alaska at one time. That's actually how I met my wife, is I dragged her up from Salt Lake to Alaska, out in the bush. And I invited her to come up and live there and, you know, get a job and, you know, kind of get on her feet, you know, and then if she still wanted to date me and, you know, kind of like get together, we would. But when she told me about her lifestyle and what was going on in her life, I said, hey, you come up here and I can get you a job. That's no problem. I said, you can get on your feet and you can, you know, be productive and you know, figure out who you are and what you are and where you're going, you know, and sure enough, she did. And wow, she wound up wanting to marry me. <laughs> Imagine that. Cool. God had wonderful things in store for her. As the man tells his side of the story, and the women go, uh-huh, right. <laughs> of course, there's always more to the story. But being that this Friday we're going to shut down, we're going to, since I can't talk her into moving back to Alaska, I always take at least, you know, maybe seven to ten days to get out in the woods, you know, and be far away from everything and to kind of refresh myself because it gives you a better perspective once you get rid of all the accoutrements, you know, all the easy living stuff, you know, and kind of get back to just building a fire, you know, and kind of camping out next to a river, you know, and kind of enjoying just what God has done in creation, even though it's under a curse. So for ten days more or less, or probably seven, to be accurate. It may go longer, but Vidivo will be shut down, you know, and I pray that you may be blessed, you know, in what you do, because when we come back, we'll be gearing up for that huge onslaught that we look at seeing coming at us, you know, especially towards the end of the year with this 2012 kind of like hysteria that goes on, you know. People are going to get carried away about what the end of the world's like, and especially with all these elections, I mean, Boy, if there's ever a good reason why I don't want to be around television, the election is one. <laughs> so I can't wait to get away from it all and you know just veg to not think, to be still. And every year that I do, it's always kind of well peaceful. It's nice and. To recap what God has done from last year to this year, we're approaching our 100,000 mark in people observing the ministry, people viewing 
you know, the ministry that has begun, you know, that my wife and I sat down and prayed about, you know, starting the ministry. And now we're getting right real close to that mark of 100,000 people. And uh, that humbled me. That kind of gives me more of a kind of a perspective on what God is doing, you know, in the ministry. And I thank God that he's done it all free. You know, we haven't taken a cent. We haven't done anything. We haven't, you know, chosen to be any other way except for like you and I, you know, poor, you know, trying to make ends meet, living from paycheck to paycheck. But also, I wanted to recap and recount to what God had done also from where we were to where we are. We were once, you know, helping to start a church, you know, in a ministry, you know, and then we moved back when the ministry was done to help them get started, you know, and then we were kind of living with this, you know, kind of like pastor who seemed to be doing a ministry, but he's also kind of running an apartment complex, and it was kind of, kind of quasi there, you know, it kind of made me a little nervous about what was going on, so I just kept to myself, you know, and prayed and said, Lord, you know, if things go the way I think they are, then, you know, one day we'll move, and sure enough, God opened the doors for us to move, and wow, we wound up here in our new place, and it has become such a huge, phenomenal blessing to us that we went out of our way to incorporate it as our Bethel, our place where, wow, we didn't know God was there. You know, And it was kind of neat because we began to plant things and grow things and things have blossomed and bloomed. And unfortunately, i got to admit, some of the veggies, well, veggie tails just isn't my cup of tea. <laughs> the tomatoes are growing great. The veggies, I don't know. <laughs> Veggie tails may not be my kind of, you know, venue. Because <laughs> so far, I'm not sure if I've had any vegetables that are growing right. <laughs> They're all dying off. The heat seems to be killing them because it's pretty much in the 90s and 100s here. So it's been kind of interesting is that we're still trying to get this one cucumber. It's growing, you know, and it's it's kind of cute, you know. It's it's there, you know, and it's it's developing. But I still wonder, based upon my my squash that died, you know, it came up huge, and then when the heat hit, boom, it croaked. <laughs> uh, and then as other things began to die off, you know, it was like, well, that's interesting. We learned about that. And, you know, being containers, you know, we didn't worry too much about it. It was all kind of like, you know, seeds anyways, and we weren't too worried, and God taught us by it. But, you know... The tomatoes have gotten huge. They're, I've got one that looks like a monster tomato that should be taken to the county fair or something, you know, and just shown off as being like, wow, look at that. I mean, it's still green and it's still growing, but man, it's amazing what God can do, you know, with just a little bit of water and sunshine, and man, it's just crazy. But shutting down the ministry, that means that we likewise will be gone from what may be happening in your life. And I just wanted to let you know that I commit you guys always unto prayer. You know, I give you to God and I trust Him to take care of you because I care for the people that have watched or have ever seen anything that has happened ever on video because I've always said that this is about me and you discovering God intimately and personally, knowing Jesus in a way that would help you to walk in a way that you've never known him before. And I would recommend to you at some point in time in your life to do the same thing that I've done. Walk away. Be always ready, willing, and able to, quote unquote, walk away. I don't mean plan out a vacation like, you know, going to a water park, which we do. You know, my wife and I have water park tickets and we go and about every weekend and then during the county fair we or state fair we go and go to the water park and we have fun. But I don't mean those planned vacations that you do when you go to like Disneyland or someplace where you work more than you actually vacation. But I mean, take a time that you walk away. Kind of like what the Australians used to say about a walkabout. Just go away from it all. Go away from the ministry, go away from the church, go away from your friends, neighbors, relatives, whatever, and spend some quality time alone. You know, quiet time. Time to be still. Time to kind of detox, like some people talk about with their diets. You know how they always are telling you about you need to detox this and detox that, and eat this and eat that because you want to get all that junk that you've been putting into your body out of you? I don't know about you, but I like my junk. <laughs> I've got my junk in my trunk. <laughs> yeah, I hang on to junk. I'm a junk collector. <laughs> I kind of enjoy fast food. But, you know, be that as it may, maybe you need to detox, you know, but 
for me, because I'm a technology nut, you know, I've been involved in technology now, and in the ministry, I've been so confined to just doing computer work on the internet ministry that I need time to be away from it to get back to what I used to do, you know, physical stuff, you know, because I used to work in hard physical labor, and then I went into really. I call it belly jelly work, you know, where you just kind of sit around and get belly jelly, you know, but, you know, stuff where you're just working on a computer with your fingers and, you know, you're kind of typing a little bit, you know, and you're kind of just dink, 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 you know, well, that's, that's important too, you know, it exercises your mind and you're fried by the end of the day, but, you know, there's a balance too between physical and mental as well as technological and natural, and for me, my balance comes when I go away from it all. As I've been so involved in it, I go so de-involved in it. So for 10 days, I just wanted to let you know I didn't get raptured. I didn't walk away like Enoch. At least I don't know yet. Maybe. You never know. Maybe maybe God and I will just take a walk into heaven, you know, and I just decide not to come back this time. But who knows? <laughs> But given 10 days from now, or 10 days from Friday, if I'm not back on, then go forward in the Lord. You know, Check out the videos that you can find on the Internet. Just Google video. You'll find them all over the place. You know, I made sure that they were like stashed here and stashed there and stashed everywhere. You know, and praise the Lord. It's been fun doing it. But, you know, I'm sure that I'll be back. But you never know. You just trust in the Lord and let Him lead. But this last year in ministry, it's been good because... Likewise, in expanding into this house that has been huge with vaulted ceilings and kind of like all kinds of room and room for the ministry, we kind of like spread out real fast and now we're kind of getting better organized and better coordinated because, boy, the heat was something. We got the air conditioning fixed, you know, and then also just recently we got our car fixed, you know, that new car that we kind of had to give up my old Ford Focus wagon that was my truck. <laughs> Yeah, that car had a blessing on it, but we gave it to a ministry, so they repaired it and used it. You know, but even as that, you know, we've had this car that has just not run right because it was like air filter, air sensors on it were messed up. But my wife chose it and decided, you know, she wanted it, and sure enough, it only had like it was really old. You know, I mean, like I forget, maybe ten years or more old, but it had less than fifty thousand miles on it. That was strange. And everybody that looks at it and sees it and says, wow, you got a great deal. Well, for me, it was like, it's such a deal, you know. <laughs> it doesn't run. It's got an air thing, you know. So we spent some money on it. And just recently, we had to put all of our income tax into it to fix it, you know. And then we had to put $600 more. Ooh. But now, ooh, gosh, it runs like a champ. And we had been paying, like, you know, because different mechanics had said to do this. And I'm willing to go along with it for my wife's sake. Although I wouldn't have done it on my car. But we went and kept buying all this premium expensive gas just for the car to keep it running, you know. Sure enough, as soon as we got that air sensor fixed, you know, and then some other grand master cylinder air filter thingy, not filter, but whatever it was, fixed. Man, we're putting in cheap gas and it's running fine. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Because now we're not sweating out, you know, finances, you know, because we're always a little tight. And we haven't been buying quite as much, you know. I've been going, man, I remember when you used to be able to go to Burger King every day. <laughs> Just kidding. I know some of you people are health nuts. I do my hummus, you know, and my bagels. Yes, I know, you know, sardines, you know. Hey, we put them together, you know, we got in Vegas, oil and all that junk. But, you know, when you want to indulge, you know, and eat some junk food, you want to be able to go eat some junk food, you know. And my wife and I, we have our junk food places, you know. Obviously. <laughs> so, God has blessed us, you know, this last year. And whenever I go on vacation, I always take that time to think about over the year what He's done. And it's been challenging in a lot of ways, but it's been a blessing in more so than ever I could have imagined. Because just this house and this car that we're in, as well as, you know, what we're doing, I never would have imagined a year ago, much less compared one year ago today to what it is today because from that moment to here has been just day and night from aggravations that seem to be constant around us to peace that really does pass all understanding you know 
I feel myself really tired and worn out simply because I know I'm getting a sore throat. And apparently, from what I read, might just be because I've been involved in air conditioning too long that it might just be dry air. But the point being is, as God may prune you, as God may use you, as God may transplant you from one container to another, as he may choose to move you around in your life, or your ministry, or your wife, or your children, or whatever it may be that God does with you or in you, don't lose sight of the fact that your goal isn't what you got or what you're getting, but your goal is knowing Jesus more personally and intimate in a way that you've never known him before every single day of your life. Everywhere you go and everything you should do, you should take the Lord with you because He is in you. You should experience God in all that you say and all that you pray, in everything that you are mindful of and everything that is coming at you. In the back of your mind, you should remember God is with you. God is in you. God is seeing what you're doing and He's doing what you're seeing. He's literally experiencing the same thing you're experiencing. Now, for some of you, I know you're going... Yeah, and some of you like me are going, ooh, ouch! I need to straighten up my act, man. I've been kind of like you know, a little sinner here and a little sinner there, and I need to quit sinning. <laughs> yeah, well, I pray for you all that the Lord our God, who is gracious and merciful, kind and everlasting, loving kindness extended to generations from everlasting to everlasting, even to the 10th and the 20th generation, I pray that He may reach out to you today and to touch you in a special way that He would never have done before except that today you learned how to walk with Him and to say, this is my God, Him I will serve. And you know, that's what the difference is when I listen to people. I listen to what they talk about. I listen to what they say. I watch what they do. But more so, I hear the words that they're using when they talk about Jesus. And I wonder, just like Jesus did, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith or the faith? When the Son of Man returns, will he find people that know him already? Or will they discover him for the first time? I think if you looked around, because I'm going to an area that really is depressed and devastated by economic downtrodden, I think you'll find that even though Jesus said the poor you'll always have with you, there's something about the poor and needy that always seem to have a close relationship with God. They seem to have some kind of insight into Jesus that maybe those who are prosperous and always happy with much money you know, and much riches and wealth, because in reality, even the poorest in America is rich compared to the poverty in the world. But there's something about the poor that cry out to God and he hears their cry. It makes me want you to think about them in a particular way. Because you see, I was as them, and there but for the grace of God go I. And at times, there go I. For I have been abased, and I have been abound. I have prospered, and I have been impoverished. I have gone from one extreme to another. But in all these things, I have found that Jesus is more than a conqueror, not I but that he has conquered me and found in me someone who will always reach out and cling to that with which he has given me, his grace and mercy. And that I pray for you. Hang on and hold on to the faith that you've got, because it's all you got. If you got Jesus, you got it all. And by the grace that you give to someone else, he'll give you grace. And by the mercy you give to someone else, he'll give you mercy. And by the love you extend to someone else, he will love you. Do you see what I mean? It's not about getting and then giving. It's about giving and he'll get to you. And he'll give to you so that you can give to others that which you need for you. God bless you. I don't know when I'll see you next. Maybe we'll record tomorrow. Could be. I'm still getting ready. But this was a special video. You know, a special one to let you know that Hey, God has blessed this ministry. And when we hit 100,000, wow, amazing. I'll be humble. Imagine me. Humble. Huh.
Imagine that. <laughs> but such as it is, and such as we do, I pray that the Lord leads you in ways that I never dreamed of and you never did either, but that He would choose to use you in ways that might just blow people's minds every day that you're alive. Because I'm sure that there's someone around you looking at you going, that's a Christian? Huh. Never would have imagined he'd get saved. Of course, I think that's what they said about me. 